Once uh, you were mentioning something about Sayyidina Ali fighting aliens. Can you speak more about that? That this is from the hadith of Prophet that described the, that Imam Ali had been missing for a few days and said that in Fatima Tazari was concerned that is he's not around and what had happened. Long story short, went to Prophet was concerned and Prophet described that don't be concerned, he's doing a service, a khidmat for us. And later was described that that khidmat is a protection from the inhabitants of the moon, that their intention is to reap destruction upon the earth. And the spirituality and the might of Imam Ali Salam was sent to fight them and to lead a, a armies of Rijal to push them back and to fight them from coming against the inhabitants of the earth. That's what is described in the Nadi Ali that we, rec that we recite. It describes that Islam's protection and is safeguarded by this reality. This is not a reality in which Allah liked and then blessed. Allah created the soul of Imam Ali Salam for that purpose, that he would be the follower and the youthful love of Sayyidina Muhammad means it's all been written that from this light this soul would be created and this soul would be one of the safeguards and the safeguard for Islam and for humanity. And that this might and power runs through his soul and it's through his progeny that Imam Mahdi is coming. His power is only as strong as his grandfather which is the source. Imam Mahdi is a grandson of Imam Ali So it means the might and the power is in the hands of Imam Ali that is safeguarding the nation. And that's the immense blessings of reciting Nadi Ali and especially the one that we have that goes into the description that you keep the faith alive, you keep the flag moving. If it was for humans they would have been overtaken by shayateen but because of this light and power that Allah gives and then Allah destined souls to love Him and when they have that love they are with him. When he's with them he's protecting and sending a might and an izza into their heart. When this is the completion of Ayatul Kareem, Izzatullah, they're like three locks. If you want the, the pure and the complete key Allah describes what? The ma'izzat is Izzatullah, so Allah has to be in the phrase, Izzat Rasul that you have to have a key from Sayyidina Muhammad Wa izzat al-mu'mineen and this izzat al-mu'mineen is a direct reference to Imam Ali Salam that this uncontested izzat and might and that that perfection of Ayatul Kareem is that when these three looks have been put into the heart and twisted and completed means that the true izzat of Allah never will reach a servant unless he is with Izzat Rasul. And that's why when we recite that song that if you have a thousand pieces of skin and Allah sends a fire to you, even thousand layers of skin won't protect you. There's nothing you can do to protect yourself being clever. But if you one skin has the protection from Imam Ali Salam, all the fire in the world is not going to burn you. Means that this is an understanding of when Izzatullah want to come to the servant, Izzatullah doesn't come in its completeness without the Izzat Rasul And Izzat Rasul doesn't come with its completeness without Izzat al-Mu'mineen and that's the love and the ishq for Imam Ali Because that requires the good character, good manners and the real love and ishq in which they love all the holy companions because it teaches futuwa and chivalry to have the best of character, best of manners. When that dress is complete upon the servant 
they have unlocked la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azim, aliyul azim. So this is all in everything. So when Allah wants to dress the servant, He gives them lisan as-siddiq al-aliyya, lisan as-siddiq al-aliyya. Because these are all the perfection. So the, the izzat al-mu'mineen is that true love with good character for, for Sayyidina Imam Ali salam. When we love him and respect him and have the best of character, this might and this majesty begin to dress the heart of the servant and leads them to the perfection of their character. And that was the whole reality of the tariqah. That's why Naqshbandiya describes the Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is the complete moon, represents that your perfection. Give everything in the way of Allah and His Rasul, meaning being complete servant to that reality. It becomes the perfected moon and teaches us, be truthful in your deed and in your action. Don't call yourself something that you're doing something nefarious on the side, but be truthful in your deed and in your actions. Means your actions are truthful, your character is truthful, your love is truthful. Not love and hate, love and hate, love and hate, cheat and do all sorts of horrible things. This is a Siddiqiyya reality, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq comes and perfects the moon. And then opens the reality of the cave within the heart of the servant and begins to hold back shaitan. But Imam Ali salam is also teaching at that time that sacrifice yourself, lie in the bed and make yourself to be halal, sacrifice yourself. Don't put anything about yourself from reaching your path, no I can't but, no I can't but, no you can and sacrifice everything. Make yourself to be halal for Sayyidina Muhammad So then these two great Sahabi are perfecting the character outside inside so that they are of a perfect outside character, Siddiqiyya reality, perfection and truthfulness and their inside is pukht, is cooked, is rushed and ripe. Their inside is an inside of immense sacrifice, they sacrifice themselves at any moment for that love. And their life is, is based on immense faith, immense faith because of that love and because of that sacrifice. And they live a life of service because of that sacrifice. That then becomes a common understanding. That's why Naqshbandiya is the soul of Islam, it's the soul of all tariqahs because it has that complete and common reality from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the shaykhs become Qamarun. And has the complete and love of Imam Ali Salam and the prophetic inheritance. And they live a life of sacrifice. Sacrifice yourself for the love of, of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please explain how Sayyidina Ali is connected to the Ba and the Nuqt? Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> the Imam Ali Salam represents for us the Zulfiqar and the reality of La ilaha illallah wa Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that this is the reality of the kalima. And this was the sword and the reality that Allah gave to Sayyidina Muhammad And that Prophet passed that responsibility and that reality by giving the Zulfiqar to Imam Ali Salam. And that's when we describe and these are many different talks on the reality of Lam Alif that the La ilaha illallah there is nothing but Allah and that Muhammadun Rasulullah 
and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah And between that La ilaha illallah there's a who from the hay to who to mim and that the handle of the sword is the reality of who. And that Prophet was giving to Imam Ali that you are the responsible one for this who and you are the master of the who, you are the master of the who men who you make them from hidayat and guidance and that their character is filled with wadud and wow and they represent the real reality of who and ishq and love. And as a result he's the gatekeeper of that reality. When Prophet described, ana madinata ilmu ali babahu, I am the city of knowledges and Imam Ali Salam is the bab, ulul ahbab, ulul albab. The masters of muhibbat, ahbab and, mul- and ulul bab and the custodian of the gate because all the knowledge is Prophet which is what? Inna huwa bismillahir rahmanir raheem, inna huwa bismillahir rahmanir raheem. Huwa Sulaiman wa inna huwa, inna huwa bismillahir rahmanir raheem. That's a description of Prophet he is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa Ali Babahu. So, what's the gate of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem? Ba, the custodian of the gate. So, that's the spiritual understanding of that hadith. That I am the gate of knowledge means every knowledge it starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So the flowing of all of Qur'an is in seven verses, 30 juz, 30 juz is collapsed to seven verses. These seven verses are the seven verses of Surah Fatiha. So all of Qur'an is in Surah Fatiha. All of Surah Fatiha in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem in the ba. That's the opening of the city. So, Uno huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem means then Prophet is the Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and he is the city of all knowledges. Within his ruh and soul is the custodian of all knowledges in uloom and he is the city of lights and city of knowledges. And he placed Imam Ali Salam as its gatekeeper. That with your Zulfiqar the only who can enter into this city of knowledge that they have no head means they're not going to be Nafsani people, they're going to be Ruhani people. There's no place in the heart of Prophet for Nafsani people, Imam Ali takes their head off. And that's why the crushing in tariqah, the crushing in tariqah is to take the head of people and that's the spiritual head, stop thinking, stop using your ego, stop using your bad character, stop talking, take a life of silence, take a life of submission, take a life of opening your heart and that the mouth of people burn them and the mouth of people is their worst enemy, people are their own worst enemy. So Imam Ali Salam sits with the Zulfiqar and responsibility is to make them rijal. That you coming our way, you want to enter into this city then your head has to come off and you have to have good character. Now you understood then you entered into Jabal Kaf because you have no head so everything is dark. Means you're entering into the city in which you don't manifest and the only thing that manifests in that city is Muhammadun Rasulullah and that all of Qur'an is in the ba. So then that's a description when Allah describing who ulul bab, the people of the bab and then Prophet describing babahum 
then that's a description that Imam Ali Salam is the custodian of the reality of that bah. And Allah dressed with the nukht, that power and izzat and might upon Imam Ali Salam inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you please share something with regards to the life of Imam Hassan alayhi salam and the hikmah behind how he became target of propaganda and got martyred? No way. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to go to extern external people. These are not uh, political things that we are… If you come to us, you come for spiritual, we're not a political group and definitely not making schisms and schemes amongst communities. Their reality is not something you can understand through politics and following political countries and their propaganda. The immensity of their reality and the immensity of Allah's dress upon them is something that can't be understood. So it means then you go to the site and understand from the keys of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And that the two eyes of Prophet one is under Imam al Hassan and Imam al Husayn. And Sifat al Rahman represents the reality of Imam al Hassan. Sifat al Rahim represents the reality of Imam al Husayn. And they're described in, for insana common because the whole of creation is the embodiment of Muhammadun Rasulullah. So we have a nasheel qurat al ain jatta al hasani wal husayn means that was a description from awliya when they saw in Sana Kamal, they saw that the right eye of Prophet is the dress of Imam al Hasan so, and the left eye of Prophet is the dress of Imam al Husayn so. And they saw on it a Rahman on Imam al Hasan and a Rahim on Imam al Husayn as salam. And so anything coming in to the physical creation is under Sifat al Rahim. So with the Nukht of Ali, the seed of Imam Ali, the womb of Sidna Fatima, the first that's born is through Sifat al Rahman. So everything in the material world is appearing through the lights of Imam al Hasan as salam and his soul. From that ocean Allah making everything in the manifest world, so that's immense. Anything from Malakut took from the seed of Imam Ali to the holy womb of Al-Batul means that a womb that never needed cleansing, it's purification beyond imagination in the realm of, of lights. From that womb came the reality of al Husayn salam which is Sifat al-Rahim. So these are, these are the immensities, not the political aspirations of countries and, and uh, the use of the family for political separation of people. They are so far from the reality that their heads are the first that uh, Imam Mahdi will take off. <coughs> uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. So, is there any reality of reciting Surah Yasin in the morning after Fajr? What do you mean is it a reality? It's in our awrat. Or what is the reality? <laughs> yeah, what is the reality? <laughs> so, Qur'an is telling us to recite it. Of course there's a reality. Surah Yasin is, is the heart of Qur'an, is the heart of Prophet is the heart of every emanation. That means you didn't get our, our book on Surah Yaseen. So now you have to buy two of them and give one to someone else. Because uh, this is all about the ishq of Prophet You have to get the books. Unfortunately probably our people buy the books and put it on their bookshelf. The people outside the center, they buy the books and read them. That when you get the book on Surah Yaseen and study the reality of Surah Yaseen then you understand it's the entire reality of Holy Qur'an, the reality of Prophet the head of the entire fountain of all creation. So imagine then reciting that, you're dressing and blessing with the entirety of all creation. 
and you're calling upon Sayyidina Yaseen Habibullah which is from the love of Allah and the love of Allah wanting creation to be known, creating creation to be known, His secret to be known. That's from the immensity of Surat Al Yaseen. So imagine every time you recite that how you're being dressed by all of its realities and all its blessings. And Fajr is a movement for awliyaullah into the presence of Maqam Al Mahmud, Sayyidina Muhammad Al Mustafa, Sayyidina Muhammad Al Mahmud So it means all of Fajr is a prayer into the presence of Prophet That's why the Surat Al Yaseen is at the end so that to be dressed by the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And this is the awrad of the Sultan of Saints. So by just reciting what the Sultan of all awliya Allah out of 124,000 awliya and what they have for awrads, we have the awrad of Shaykh Nazim which is the Sultan and awliya's recitations. As we imitate those recitations we're moving in his movement eternally into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So it has immense, immense reality. Then Prophet described for us, recite this upon your dead. Why? Because if they didn't achieve anything in this world, just its recitation would dress all of its haqqaiqs upon that soul. Right when they're departing from this earth, you're giving them the, a ticket towards immense realities by just reciting it and calling and that recitation unlocks all of its secrets, its realities and all the ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and intercedes for them. It intercedes for them and dresses them in blessings means its immensity can't be understood and the hikmah and love that Allah has for this creation that give it to them at the last second right before they're dying, okay have them recite Surat Al Yaseen and that immense recitation is an intercession to achieve and to be dressed by these realities and the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum Shaykh Walaykum as salaam uh, Is there a connection between the word malakut and the sphere of malakut on the Kabbalah tree of life from Jewish mysticism? No idea you'd have to ask a Jewish mystic. But I would imagine there's many similarities on spiritual paths. You uh, have to imagine that their spirituality is uh, cut off. So they have a, a limit and their passport is an expired passport. However, they enjoy their passport, doesn't matter. But for us just to understand the analogy that every nation has a passport. And when a new Prophet comes, a new passport from heaven is issued. You can keep your old passport because there's no compulsion. But it's not an updated passport. What we want is a global passport that encompasses Christianity, Zoroastrian, Judaism and Islam. The global passport for Allah is Islam in which encompasses all the realities upon what they understood to what Prophet came to complete. So yes you find many things from old time to new time to Hinduism, Judaism, all of these have tastes of the reality. Its perfection is in the Muhammadan reality. And their Adama Kadnon is nothing comparable to Insana Kamil. Insana Kamil is about Sayyidina Muhammad They understood from Adama Kadnon, the perfected Adam, not Adam Shamash but Adama Kadnon, right? They stopped at that, so they don't have Muhammadun Rasulullah, they don't have Insana Kamil the perfected insan in which they understood all creation is in one soul. And that's why Allah described, if you killed one as if you killed it all 
and that our Ruh al-Wahid, we created all creation from our Ruh al-Wahid, from one soul. So if you don't know who that soul is, you think you missed the highway big time. But you may understand, oh there was a one soul, yeah, yeah, but if you don't know that soul then imagine how much you missed of it and then you only know about it. But those whom are Muhammadiyoon, they're in it, they live it, they breathe it, they're being continuously revived by it. And that Allah res will resurrect them from it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam uh, The shaykh mentioned reciting Surah Yaseen at the dying person helps them. Can we do this virtually too? Example when the person is dying in a different country or do we need to be with them? No, no definitely. Allah is free of space and time. You can recite it all the time. That's why every fajr you're reciting it. And at the end of fajr there's an idah, is a gift. So all our prayers its secret is in the idah. Remember we told the story last night, the shaykh was selling a stick for one dirham. One dirham 500 years ago is how much today? When people complain about the price of rice at the center. He was selling a worthless stick for one dirham which probably is maybe 10,000 dirham today in today's currency and for one dirham he was giving them houses in paradise. Means their faith, they had to have faith in what they were doing. As a result Allah was dressing them and blessing them. So means this path is based on an immense amount of faith. When they have that faith then imagine everything that they're reciting, everything that they're doing, what Allah is dressing them, blessing them, filling them with lights that can't even be imagined. And that's why they, they ask for the shaykh's prayer. If you think your prayer has a power to dress someone and dress them from realities that you don't even know. But when Allah gives someone to know a reality and when they pray, they're praying with all the realities to be opened upon that recitation. Means then this is a way of faith, that's why the analogy, if you're selling a matchbook just to see if somebody is going to, to believe and with one dirham they got paradise. And we said before the awliya of today are much more powerful than the awliya of past because the secret of awliya of the past they have to give that secret as an inheritance to the shaykhs of today. And the shaykhs of today inherit the old secret and anything new coming from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So means then they are fully loaded, loaded with realities and these realities are to safeguard and to deliver people to their destination for Yawmul Mashar. So as we get closer to Yawmul Mashar then more is and might is dressed upon the servants, dressed upon that reality and the nazar of Prophet is, is much more intensely upon them now than 500 years ago. So imagine then that it requires faith, if they have faith uh, imagine then what, what everything is opening. If they don't have faith then doesn't matter, they see it with something, nothing of any importance in their eyes. They won't believe the du'a of this one or the belief of the du'a of that one, it doesn't make a difference. But when you have faith you begin to understand well if they're teaching all these realities, imagine if they make a du'a for us with all of these realities. And that's why then they say, Basira Surat al-Fatiha, why? Because in their heart they have the key for the secret of Surah Fatiha. And that all of Qur'an is inside that Surah Fatiha and they have a video describing Surah Al-Fatiha and the secret of the seven verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. So with that seal, with that secret is dressing that du'a, inshaAllah. Uh, As-Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As-Salaam wa rahmatullah. 
Uh, Sayyidi, if Jannah is not physical, why are there physical descriptions in the Quran? And will we have our physicality in Jannah? Yeah, Jannah is a world of light and you have to attract people to their point of reference. But that's why when you make reference to higher levels of their du'a, they say, we don't want Jahannam and we don't want your paradise, we want your holy face. Because that which perishes is of no interest to us, we want that which never perishes, means the holy face of Allah that reflects Wajik al Kareem, the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad So then they understood that Jannah then is like an amusement park, offer them you know an amusement park so that they'll do good. Offer them paradise and grapes and rivers because it was a hut and it was… Imagine a, a flowing river as very entertaining in, a, in hot circumstances. So you have to entice people but at the same time Allah is teaching us you should raise your children the same way. Same way you're enticed by paradise and all the beautiful things that Allah wants to give you will give your children. You say, don't fast because you're going to beat them, but say, I'm going to pay you every day to fast and every day is a paradise for you when you fast. I'm going to pay you to pray and every time you pray here's some money. So why Shaykh? He said, because Allah is offering you money too or offering you all sorts of goods and riches and, and uh, blessings what you call paradise. So it's one is a lesson for us on how to, to deal with people, to entice them to come, to come. The Ahlul Badr and the immensity of Ahlul Badr was very important and in most videos it's lost its understanding. The Prophet was at the beginning of the nation and they had run from Mecca to Medina and most of their property was stolen and taken by the inhabitants of Mecca. By the time they entered into Medina to Munawwara that and it was Allah's will that are you going to keep your property or are you running with Sayyidina Muhammad actually towards Sayyidina Muhammad So every step of the way Allah's testing, when people think, why we have to be tested? You can never be tested like the holy companions. But imagine they ran from their property, ran from the real estate they held, ran from everything to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad The battle of Badr and why we recite and, and talked about the battle of Badr but we didn't talk too much about it that night. And the immensity of Ahlul Badr is that Prophet went to them and said, Oh we have word that the, our goods are on a caravan, a Meccan caravan from the idol worshippers, why we don't just go out to the desert and get it? And 313 of the noble companions said, we're with you, let's go. But it wasn't planned on warfare, so they took normal set of arms to cross a desert and went for the caravans of, of their possessions and how Allah wants to test and this is a, a testing in all our lives. Halfway into the event they get word that the caravan of goods has left because they got word that Prophet came with his holy companions. And that the caravan of goods has left and Mecca has replaced it with armies of thousand to three thousand soldiers heavily armed and now coming towards the Messenger of Allah Prophet went back to his companions means that you entice people with what they want. They want dunya, bring them with dunya. Went to them and said that, I have bad news. That you, we came for our property, that caravan left. Now they have mounted an army to come and to destroy. I as a messenger of Allah can never retreat. My law from Allah is I have to stand ground, I cannot run and retreat. But you are free because I brought you under the pretense of getting your property, you are free to go. And the nobility of their character 
and the ishq and love they have for Prophet said, we take everything from you. You told us whatever to forbid, we forbid it. We would go to the end of the earth if you called upon it, we would never move from your side. And Prophet was so happy with this ishq and this love that they had. And Allah was so happy with this ishq and with this love that they had for Sayyidina Muhammad and why people can't understand that. When they say, the, oh the companions they fulfilled their oath to Allah. No, this was an oath that Allah made happy that they stood by the Messenger of Allah They fulfilled their covenant to their life and death to be by the side of Sayyidina Muhammad That's what made Allah happy. And that was their example that never leave the side of Sayyidina Muhammad And because of their commitment to the love of Prophet as soon as their battles began Prophet came out from the tents and started to give takbir that he saw thousands of angels in yellow turbans in the colours of the lataif, in red turbans, in white turbans and in green turbans and black turbans descending from the heavens coming to the support of Sayyidina Muhammad and his holy companions. And as they came down into the battlefield he merely said, Ya Rabbul Izzati wa Azzamati wa Jabarut and the angels took off the heads of all of these enemies and they could see burn marks on the back of the necks as their necks were smited by the swords of angels. That was the immensity that their love and their commitment to Sayyidina Muhammad that's why we recite their name because they fulfilled their covenant and their oath that the Prophet of Allah was now surrounded by holy companions who were all awliya. Allah had fulfilled all their covenants. And إِذَا جَاءَ النَّاسُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتُ وَرَعَيْتَ النَّاسَ يُدْخَلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا Means this was a description of the holy companions that Allah had fulfilled their entire covenants and they were un- unstoppable, undefeatable because of their allegiance and their love to Sayyidina Muhammad successful in dunya and in akhirah always inshaAllah, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi I used to sit in a room where people used to come and talk useless things. Due to this I got very angered and all my practices have broken. What should I do? You used to sit in a room with people coming and gossiping, you're very angry and what happened? And all my practices have broken. Why would the practices be broken? Just walk away from the room where people were talking bad. Means this practices, this life of ours, you have to imagine like a, a, a plane that is refilling in midair. So they want to test the pilot to see he's a good pilot. It's not that he gets gas while the plane is grounded on the ground. You think that would be the sign of a good pilot? Or they actually make him to refuel in air. Where he's in the middle of the air, he has to connect to another plane, has to get his refueling and his jet. Means life is about meditation, spirituality and practices during difficult times, difficult conditions, yelling, screaming, agitation, kids moving, making too much noise, too much aggravation everywhere. It's not for you to find a perfect, serene, quiet place all the time because life is not like that. Sometimes you train where it's quiet, other times you train where it's very noisy. Just to see if you can control your mind, your agitation and bring yourself into a sense of peace. You don't open yourself in a, in a shopping mall. But you practice that at the center when it's a little bit busy and the zikr is starting and there's somebody agitating near you, you keep your connection, keep your cool and make your connection. And that's a part of the training because later on in life you may be running and things are you know screaming and the world is upside down and you have to be able to connect your heart, shut everything off like it doesn't even exist and at that time go into your state and the state of your connection inshaAllah. 
So every, everything has a, has a training and a reality. When you're around people who talk bad and, and uh, not good character, then you learn to either walk away from it or shut off. If they're your parents and, and loved ones, you can't uh, just isolate and leave. You learn to shut off and cut your heart off and not participate in maybe bad talk and, and bad issues and, and you're present but you're not present. So these are different practices that people can try to learn and, and to understand inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. These are good questions. I think a lot of people should uh, be happy with them. Online comments are always very happy because there are a lot of questions that maybe they had in their heart but they didn't ask. You should be writing, Haji Jawad, you should be writing the answers so that you can use them one day. And then, so otherwise you look like you're getting bored. Allah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah In the world of malakut, what's the meaning of the word mawla? In the world of malakut, what's the meaning of mawla? Ya Sali. Our master? Everything, everything is related to Sayyidina Muhammad and that uh, this Muhammadan light and Muhammadan reality and the, the blessings of our master and one whom we owe our entire allegiance. So it's like, a, like an army. If the commander and the ultimate commander Sayyidina Muhammad everything then has a chain of authority. And that's why it's a, un, people have to understand military structure and military structure basically came from Islam. If you look at Western military, it wasn't very structured. Uh, there were just farmers driving shovels and, and things and going. But Islam came and brought a dis uh, an, an immense structure. That there's a commander, generals, captains, lieutenants, all of these structures and if that's for fighting in dunya then imagine for fighting our demons and our bad character. That's what's the importance is that our, our, our Lord is Allah the Creator is Allah but He gave an authority. So our King is Sayyidina Muhammad and then those whom He placed in authority amongst us. As a result of that authority and allegiance to that authority then the good manners, good characteristics begin to come. When the good characteristic comes it's a taming for the individual. So when somebody accepts that they have a, a master over them then they acknowledge to be nothing and that's essential. Since we talk about malakut and energy, the guys in, in electronics and computers they all know that. So they have a, a master unit and they have a slave unit, right? So they have a master computer, CPU and there are other units that are following, they can't be masters so they are slaves. So they use the same terminology in everyday life all around us. You can have a master remote and it's fully programmed but if you want to accompany the master remote and to learn what the program and the buttons are, you can't be a master. So it's the reality of binary code that I'm going to go in the presence of these masters and I'm learned to be nothing. As soon as I'm nothing. The master then can begin to program your buttons so that his one, when he presses one, it hits your one. Not that he press one and your button three goes off to do what you want, then you haven't been programmed by the shaykh. When the ijazah comes from the shaykh means that we programmed him according to our buttons and anywhere he goes. We move all his buttons and that's us. 
So it means that we have modeled this slave after our master. And now he's a master unit to go out and to program others. That's exactly how technology works. Servers, you can have one master server with thousands of slave units running off of it. So this is, this is a, a reality. So this is the binary code, everything is based on one and zero. If everything wants to be a one then there's no code, there's no transference of knowledge or energy. Because from one to one you can't, you can't send because one and zero is actually on and off, a positive charge, negative charge. It's, a, it's actually one charge that you give and release a charge. So if the shaykh is going to send a charge while you're trying to send a charge, there's nothing going to happen. But when you taslim and bring yourself down that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, as soon as he sends a charge you're able to receive a charge. But if you're too busy trying to charge him and talk to him and teach him and talk and keep saying something means then these charges you're putting out a pulse and he's putting out a pulse and it's not going anywhere until the shaykh just gives up and he doesn't put a pulse anymore at all. And you just keep putting your own pulse out and it's going nowhere. So the person's not understanding the binary code. So if you want to receive from their pulse, from their energy, from their nazar, reduce yourself to Nothing, nothing. And that's why then Surat Al-Kahf describes this relationship. It's written by Allah that when two big ones are going to come in a room with each other, huge one, Sayyidina Musa salam is one who talks to Allah he's from the six big prophets of Allah. So he's a big one, he's a huge one and he's saying, I want to go and learn realities. And Allah says, oh, okay, I'll send you to one of our servants. So this one comes into the presence of another one and this one tells him, there's no way you can learn from me when you have little knowledge of something. You won't have any patience, either you become nothing or I become nothing. But if you came to learn from me then it requires you to be nothing. And this was their whole argument, stop asking questions, be nothing. And then every time something would happen he would ask question, means he was trying to send his signal into Sayyidina Khidr salam. But Sayyidina Khidr said, I'm the one who's supposed to send you a signal, but Allah sent you to me for me to send you a signal. And that became the, the, the reality of that holy qasa, that it teaches us that somebody's got to be off. If you're coming to learn then take a path in which to be off. If you're coming to teach then do what you like, inshaAllah. Assalamualaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa There's actually quite a few people sending messages of thanks for your du'as as uh, they've come, they've, they've gotten some healing or things have worked out. So quite a few people were saying thank you for your du'as. Alhamdulillah, Allah bless them and address them and alhamdulillah. Also a few people asking for bayah today. InshaAllah, inshaAllah. Um, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, How can we overcome living with past guilt, remorse, regret and shame? How do we come in terms to terms with a life full of mistakes and sin prior to being on the tariqah? If you're coming new to tariqah and to Islam that as soon as you give your shahada that ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluhu means that that shahada washes everything, washes all the sins and makes the person to be as if newborn child, newborn soul onto this earth. So that's an immense blessing from Allah that it's a reset button. And throughout the day when we do our awrat is a reset button. And as soon as we call the azan for our prayer, again every time we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah immediately it's a reset button. And that's why we're calling it all the time, it's in the azan, it's in the, our zikrs, it's in uh, all our awrads, 
is because Allah wants us to reset ourselves. So every time you, you, you're off, you're wrong, you're getting angry, Ya ah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah is to re- me to recalibrate my program. That back to what Allah wants and that I should be following the way of Muhammadun Rasulullah So many, many of these realities is in that uh, kalima. And then many times they understood this in Arabic culture, they may say, La illallah and the other person will say, Muhammadun Rasulullah So that to come back and say, let's sort of recalibrate ourselves and our, our, our existence and our life. So it is an immense, immense gift for a reset button and throughout the day we are resetting. So even those whom been forgiven or coming to Islam and, and accepting Islam or re, re-coming into their reality, then Allah is resetting throughout the day. And that's the, the hikmah and the wisdom of, of the praying and, and calling the azan and saying the shahada. And even saying the shahada and the salah and in the prayer, it's a continuous reset, continuous reset. And in the prayer most powerful because you're saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah and then you're saying now in the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluhu and you're bearing witness to that presence of Sayyidina Muhammad who's looking at you but you may not feel that or understand that. And that Prophet is present with all his nation at all times while they're praying and taking their shahada, washing them, cleansing and interceding for them, inshaAllah. <clears throat> Wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha